Hi, Jeremy Young here from Atomos, here to talk HDR again. First of all, the Shogun Flame and Ninja Flame are shipping now. We announced two weeks ago, we shipped last week and customers are receiving them in their hands. So if you're interested in the new 1500 nit, high bright, 10-bit processing flame series, then there's Shogun and Ninja Flame available. Ninja Flame is 1295, Shogun is 1695 with 12 gig SDI and Genlock and, and more high-end features. So what's today about? Well, the first thing is we're shipping. Second thing is we're releasing our 7.01 firmware with some user interface functionality improvements so that customers can understand what HDR is a little bit easier. So we're taking that feedback on board and we've put it in the operating system. So all the new users get a facelift on day one. So what I'm viewing here is the HDR image of my kite surfing that I showed you in my last video. So first thing we need to do, first thing you need to remember is log is HDR. So we, you don't get any HDR, wonderful brightness increase in range, unless you have a log camera. So let's go to, there's two, and the other thing you need to remember is that the waveform is extremely important in viewing the brightness, the luminance. So let's turn on the waveform, going into my Atom OS down here in waveform, as simple as turning that on, now I've got my Luma Parade. If I go back, I've got my new slider, which is SDR and HDR. Right now, I'm on 100% uh, HDR. So I'm, there's two very important numbers here. 1,490% of Rec 709. If I move that slider back down to SDR, now it says 100% Rec 709. It's very easy for everyone to understand the number of stops and the percentage of Rec 709, because it's 100%. And it's around five to six stops. There's some conjecture about exactly what level of stops there is. And we'll talk about that a bit later, which is why we say SDR plus number of stops, which is what I'm showing here. SDR plus zero stops means I'm at standard dynamic range. I'm at Rec 709 levels. And that's what I can see here. You can see I'm blowing out. So while I'm up here, there's a couple of things I'm gonna explain to you. I'm gonna talk about the waveform here. I'm gonna talk about what's being displayed on the screen, and I'm gonna talk about how that relates to the log curve that I'm using. And in this case, I'm using S-Log2. You'll notice that there are some lines that will go up and down on the waveform. This is a simulation for today. However, those lines will be included in a few weeks for our NAB launch of 7.1. So here I am on 100%. I'm at 100% of, um, I'm at, sorry, I'm at 100% Rec 709, right down the SDR end of the curve, which shows me this line here, which is approximately 60% for S-Log2. So this is showing me what clipping level for this display. So everything above this 60% line, I'm not showing in this case. So you can see that there's a lot of brightness detail around the sun that I'm not resolving. Where am I on the log curves? Well, the log curve shows me in this image that I'm at Rec 709. I'm not displaying very much of the brightness range within the log signal, but it's very, very narrow, which is why I'm blowing out here and I don't have much resolution. As I move up the SDR to HDR slider, if I go to the middle, now I'm, at, I'm resolving 400% the range of brightness of Rec 709, so Rec 709 is 100. I'm now four times that, 400%. And I'm displaying two stops above that Rec 709 standard dynamic range level. So I'm two stops above. And it's really important to remember that it's SDR plus two stops. So whether it's six or 5.5 or 5.2, there's a lot of conjecture about the human eye and the way monitors work, and it's very mathematical. What we're saying is we know that that exists, the SDR level, and we can definitely tell you how many stops above that we are on our panel. We say our panel is 10.2 stops, which is correct. It's a 1.3 black um, nit value and a 1500 nit white point value. So we, between those, you get a 10.2 stop um, result is what, what we can display. So we're displaying SDR plus these number of stops. So right now I'm at 400%. What's happened to my line? Well, now it has gone up to 80%, which means I'm resolving more of that luminance curve. I'm resolving more of the resolution. So what, what's that done to us? Well, now my sun is decreasing in the area of brightness. And because we're processing at 10 bits, you don't get any banding around that. 
So let's go in and say, actually, you know what? I want all of the dynamic range coming in from my log curve. I'm going to push that up to the maximum for this curve. Now, it does change the number of percentage right now for S-log is 1,490% of Rec. 709. That's where that curve ends. It stops at 3.9 stops above SDR. But if I go to something like an S-log 3, now I'm at 3,800% 3, on this, and I'm up here at 5 stops, around 5 stops. So if you add in the 5 to 6 plus the 5, you're at 10 to 11 stops, which is where our panel can't resolve anymore. So we, we are definitely getting all of the dynamic range in here. So now I'm at 3.9 stops, 1,490%. Look at this line. It's now at 100. I'm above all of the dynamic range coming in from the log, which means I'm now displaying it all. And what does that mean for me? Well, let me get rid of some of these overlays. I've got this really nice dark to light transition that looks like when I was shooting it, which is why we say Atom HDR, shoot what you see. And the idea is you adjust this slider so that it looks like what you were looking at at the time. So it's very simple. It sounds complicated HDR, but provided you know that you want to resolve more brightness, you can see that we're moving along the log curves on the screen. You can see that, that the log curves are moving and we're resolving more and more. The area under the log curve is how much dynamic range we're putting on the screen. So the more I move my slider up, the more dynamic range is displayed the higher the clipping point goes on the waveform. And this is very simple, and you can see the difference, right? Right now, I've got a really nice sun. If I go middle to resolve half of it, now my sun's getting bigger because my brightness range has been limited and I'm clipping. And now I'm at Rec. 709 level, standard dynamic range levels, and now I've blown everything out. So everyone's like, so how do you really set up? Well, remember, the Flame series is a monitor to have you monitor and view what the final result might look like. So this is not changing the video. It's just displaying it as a reference for DOPs, for production heads, for the cameraman, so that they can expose correctly. You wouldn't have exposed if you weren't doing HDR, you wouldn't have exposed this shot to this level. You would have stopped it right down so that you could see the sun and we would have lost details here. But I wanted the whole range because I know I'm going to finish in HDR. The beauty of recording log onto the Atomus recorders and monitors is that you keep that pristine log footage and you can always do whatever you want with it in post. This is just a standard HDR viewing so that you can adjust the exposure and set up your shot correctly. I hope everyone understands that. The real magic is in the log curve. And what we're doing is bringing that viewing um, reference to every set and only at $1,295 in the, in the most affordable version. So this is really taking the monitoring to another level and really helping you understand HDR and how it works. So we've learned a lot about HDR, how to represent it better for customers, how to show how to set it up properly using waveform and the log curves. You can see that here. And we're really hoping to help educate on how you can use HDR in your normal workflow. You can finish in Rec. 709 in post from that log footage, or you can finish in HDR. So you have the choice of both. You're not limited. So there is no reason not to buy a flame, set up for HDR, record it in log, and then you can finish it the way you want, either in standard dynamic range or some form of HDR. The last question I wanna to get to um, on the actual user interface is, why would you not use 100% HDR all the time? Well, the answer is, I have a lot of range in my scene. And all throughout the Atomus marketing and education, we are very clear to say, set up the shot the way you see it. So if there's a big range, like a big bright sun and dark corners, shadows from a sunset, then you're gonna to wanna to use the full dynamic range of brightness coming from these log curves. If it's a beautiful sunny day and it's midday and there's no shadows and it's all lit very, very brightly and it's at one level of brightness, then I can just use my 1500 nit really high bright display. There's no need to go to HDR. And if, let's say I'm halfway, let's say there's a, a nice bright lamp in the corner and I've got some dark areas. Maybe I wanna, maybe my scene looks more like around two stops more than Rec. 709 from my S-log curve. Whatever it looks like in the real world, I need to see that on here. And that will tell me that I'm getting the most brightness out of the, out of the image by our monitor. And I'm also getting the most dynamic range into the, into the scene because it looks the same as what I'm looking at.
And if there's really dark and bright areas, then you should use HDR. If there's no dark or bright areas and it's all very flat, then we recommend going up to SDR. And in that case, you can then go to Rec 709 brightness and start to adjust high bright or not. So just to recap, HDR, high bright 1500 nit in Rec 709 standard dynamic range. We now have percentages and number of stops on, on the line. And we're also including these clipping points and guides for you to set up HDR correctly. 1295, 1695 USD for Ninja Flame and Shogun Flame. There's no reason not to do HDR today from your log camera. You already have a log camera. Go buy one of these products and shoot the most amazing HDR. This is true HDR displayed on the screen.